Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergency Physicians ECG course. This is Hisham Ibrahim. I'm an emergency medicine consultant uh, in UK and today we will be discussing case number 42 from the Emergency Physicians ECG course Facebook page. We have a great case that was sent to me by one of my friends, Dr. Katie Muscroft, who is an ED consultant in UK, but she does also a lot of pre-hospital work. So the case she sent was about a 42 years old male patient, phoned for an ambulance as he had bad chest pain. Uh, he had two pre-hospital ECGs that we will see in a few seconds. The first question that we've asked was, what are the abnormalities that you can spot in the ECGs? And for our pre-hospital colleagues, would you bypass uh, the nearest ED for a PCI center? And if there is no access to a PCI center, would you thrombolize this patient or not? So let's have at the ECGs. And here we go. I would suggest if you want to hit the pause button, have a proper look at the ECG and then come back and then we can have a look together. So this was the first ECG. Um, and clearly it is showing loads of concerning abnormalities. And here's the second one. So the two ECGs are clearly abnormal with so many concerning features from the ischemia point of view. So let's analyze the ECGs and see what we've got there. So this is the first one. And um, for this one, I would say the first thing that should catch your eye is the ST elevation in AVR. And we all know that ST elevation in AVR, especially if it is associated with ST elevation in V1, like in this case, AVL, like in this case, and in presence of diffuse ST depression and most of the other leads, then this is a really bad sign and, um, and it indicates a bad STEMI. So you know what? We can stop now and activate the PCI. But there is another finding here that I want to focus on, um, which is this one. So this weird looking ST depression and a T wave pattern that is called, yes the de Winter sign. So let's talk about the de Winter sign now. This is a sign that was first reported in November 2008 in an article in New England Journal of Medicine by Robert de Winter and Hein Wellens. What they described was a specific change in the ST segment in the T wave in the form of ST depression followed by an upsloping ST segment followed by a tall symmetrical T wave in the precordial leads. The sort of T waves that when you will see, you will think, what's the potassium of this patient doing? It looks very similar to hyperkalemia. To the point that they've written that clearly in their article, that they've checked the potassium of every single patient they've recruited in the study, and they've made sure that the potassium was within normal. They've also reported loss of R wave progression in some cases. And in most cases, there was a slight ST elevation in lead AVR. So from 0.5 millimeter to one millimeter. So here is our case. And as you can see here, there is a poor R wave progression, which is uh, normally described as an R wave in V3 that is less than three millimeters. So less than three in V3 and um, and we've also uh, noticed already the ST elevation in AVR. So what's the value of the winter sign? What's the point of recognizing it? It actually indicates acute proximal LAD occlusion. It's seen in about 2% of cases with complete occlusion of the LAD and it is possibly a new indication for cath lab activation as a STEMI equivalent. But to the best of my knowledge, it is not in any guidelines yet till today. So to differentiate it from Wellen syndrome, you can actually treat Wellen syndrome as a subacute occlusion of proximal LAD. So it should be treated fairly urgently 
while with the winter sign it is an acute proximal LAD occlusion and it should be treated emergently. So this is the article that was published in November 2008 talking about this sign for the first time and in this article they've actually observed and found this sign in about 30 patients out of uh, 1,532 patients uh, with acute LED occlusion. So about 2% of cases uh, have had the winter sign. Then, then a year later, another article came out talking about exactly the same sign, the same hyperacute T wave, the winter sign. This time they've recru recruited about 1,800 patients. And again, they found it in about 2% of them. So there is now growing evidence to suggest that the winter ECG pattern is highly predictive of acute LAD occlusion. And some authors have proposed that actually the winter sign should be considered the STEMI equivalent. And the patients with chest pain with the winter sign should receive emergent reperfusion therapy with either PCI or thrombolysis. But as I've mentioned before, to the best of my knowledge, it is not in any guidelines yet. So let's have a look at some examples of cases with the winter sign. So here's the first case uh, that was sent to me a couple of years ago for a patient who had chest pain, and this is the pre-hospital ECG. And um, again, the patient was found to have an acute LAD occlusion, and we can clearly see the winter sign in V2, V3, V4. Here is another example that was sent from Egypt by Dr. Ahmed Nabil. And uh, again, we can see the winter sign in V3 and V4. Um, unfortunately, I don't know the outcome of this case and, uh, and the findings from the cath lab. A third example of a 39-year-old Egyptian male, um, another example from Egypt. He's had a background of diabetes and he presented to the hospital with chest pain. As you can clearly see, there is an ST elevation in AVR, ST elevation in AVL. Um, he was sent for a PCI and was found to have an occlusion of the LAD with triple vessel disease. But interestingly, his uh, V456 showed this uh, the winter sign. Back to UK with another example from Hampshire Hospitals of a 29 year old male patient uh, with chest pain and no ACS risk factors. And uh, his ECG clearly showed the winter sign. This patient was uh, referred for primary PCI and uh, he was found to have a complete LAD occlusion. Another one from UK from Barnsley Hospital. Um, and again, this was a 72 year old male patient with chest pain. This is the pre-hospital ECG. And um, just to make it clear, so Barnsley Hospital is a hospital with no PCI facility. So ideally, if the pre-hospital crew thought that this patient would require PCI, they should bypass Barnsley. But because they didn't think so, they brought this patient to Barnsley Hospital. He was seen there. His ECG, as you can see, and this is the pre-hospital ECG, showed the winter sign in V2, V3, V4. Uh, so they've repeated the ECG in Barnsley Hospital. And look at that. So now we've got a clear STEMI. And then the patient was referred to the PCI center. But obviously, uh, probably the outcome would have been better if he, uh, of, if that patient was um, bypassed uh, Barnsley in the first place. Another example from UK, and this time it's from Poole Hospital. And this is a really interesting one. So this was a 58 year old male patient presented to ED with a cardiac sounding chest pain. And this was his ECG on arrival. And um, the concern was this. So basically, let's make it bigger. So at the winter sign in the um, and in the anterior leads, so V3, V4, V5. I guess the question when you're faced with a patient like this, it's always what to do next. And um, and I guess even if you haven't recognized the sign as uh, as a serious sign, what you will uh, normally do is you will observe the patient because the patient will look unwell and you will get serial ECGs. And the question is always, how quick do you want your second ECG to be? So I've tried checking different guidelines to find a specific timing in terms of when to repeat the ECG. 
Um, I found once, I think it was in the NICE guidelines, that it is for suspected ACS, you should repeat the ECG after 15 minutes. But to be honest with you, I've uh, tried to find it again today and I couldn't find it anymore. So, um, but from the general practice, I would say 15 minutes to 30 minutes is the usual time that most of the ED clinicians request the ECG to be repeated at. For this particular case, let's keep an eye on the timing and let's see what happened. So right now we are at 1946 and 15 seconds and the repeat ECG was done nine minutes later and now you can clearly see the ST elevation in V2, V3, bang, we've got a now bang door STEMI. And this was just nine minutes after the first ECG. Then the third ECG was done 10 minutes after the second one with no significant difference to the second one, to be honest. And then one minute after the third ECG, sudden collapse, VF cardiac arrest. This patient received one shock and one cycle of CPR and he's had ROSC, he's had GCS of 15 out of 15, he's received some medications to control his pain, and then he's had a post-ROSC ECG, which was this one. So this last ECG was four minutes after the third, and it was 23 minutes from the first ECG. So the first ECG was this one with the De Winter sign, the second ECG was this one, and this was nine minutes after the first. And the third ECG was this one, and it was 23 minutes after the first. And in between, there was a VF cardiac arrest. So what I personally do when it comes to the winter sign in an unwell patient, what I do is I take this patient to the recess room. I connect the patient to the ECG, 12 lead ECG. I let the nurse in charge know that this ECG machine is mine now and she needs a different one for the rest of the department because I've got the sickest patient in the department. I ring cardiology to let them know while I'm pressing print back to back waiting for the STEMI to happen. Let me show you this example from University Hospital of Southampton in UK for a 53 year old male patient presented with chest pain. And my question to you is going to be, when would you activate primary PCI for this patient? This was the initial ECG that the patient presented with. And I would say V3 looks like a de winter sign to me. The second ECG was done four minutes later. I guess there is a clear ST elevation in the second one compared to the first in V2 and V3. If you're going to look at V2 and V3 and the amount of ST elevation probably is not big enough to trigger primary PCI activation in terms of the number of small squares. But I might argue that actually the deviation from the ST depression to the ST elevation should be enough. It should be more than two to three small squares to trigger cath lab activation. But again, I'll leave that for you to judge. Then the third ECG was done one minute later. Then the fourth was 40 seconds later. Then the fifth was 35 seconds later. And then the last was nine minutes later. Obviously the cath lab activation was done from the second ECG, um, but this is just to show you how quick things can move when it comes to the winter sign and STEMI progression. One more thing to know about the winter sign. So in 2018, um, this paper came out to report a case of a de winter looking T wave um, that was reported in the inferior leads and it was found to be associated with an RCA occlusion. So remember that the winter sign is being reported just in the anterior leads V1 to V6, just associated with LAD occlusion. And this was the first time, to my knowledge, that we see the winter sign in the inferior leads. So let's go back to our case and let's find out what happened. So it was about a 49-year-old male patient who phoned for an ambulance with chest pain. 
Uh, he's had two pre-hospital ECGs. He, um, the ECG abnormalities we've already discussed. And the two questions to our pre-hospital colleagues were, would you bypass the nearest ED for a primary PCI center? And if no access to a primary PCI center, would you thrombolize this patient? Let's see what happened. The patient presented with this ECG to the ambulance crew. So they were really concerned about the patient. They were concerned about the ST elevation in the ECG. And uh, unfortunately, they've had no access to a primary PCI center. So they've taken a really brave decision and they decided to thrombolize. Thrombolytic agent was given to this patient. Half an hour later, the rhythm has changed to look like this. So a broad complex, regular rhythm with a rate that is about 100. So the patient has had this rhythm for a bit, then bang, completely back to normal. So a great save by the pre-hospital colleagues and very well done. Uh, for um, picking this up and for the life that they've saved. I guess this will be about the winter sign, but there is one more final thing that we need to talk about before we finish, which is this rhythm that we've seen. So let's talk about this rhythm that looks to my eyes like an accelerated idioventricular rhythm. So accelerated idioventricular rhythm basically is also known as accelerated ventricular rhythm. And it's classically seen as a reperfusion rhythm. It's called a reperfusion arrhythmia, seen when you thrombolize acute stemmies. It can be seen in other situations and it's usually well tolerated. It's a benign rhythm and it's usually a self-limiting rhythm. The ECG feature is gonna be broad complex regular with a rate that's between 50 and 110. So when you see an ECG with what looks like VT, if the rate is above 110, consider VT. If the rate is between 50 and 110, then consider accelerated idioventricular rhythm. And if the rate is below 50, consider ventricular escape rhythm. So just to summarize, We've talked about the de Winter sign and um, it is a very important pre STEMI sign. It's a sign that you can use to predict the STEMI before it happens and probably should be considered um, as a sign that could be used to activate primary PCI and I think it should be added to the pre-hospital bypass tool. These are just some references for what we've talked about today and uh, this is uh, I guess enough me talking. So thank you so much and I hope you've find this useful and I'll see you very soon. Bye.